Let's do this. Okay, so this episode is how to become successful guiding principles and tips for success. My guest, Ethan King, the author of Six Dimensions of Success. Been waiting to speak to you. How are you, my friend, Ethan? Wow, welcome. I'm fantastic. So happy to be here, Maureen. So happy to be speaking with you. Um, and I thank you for being a part of my journey. Okay, so I will, so the book, and I have my review. So I was privileged to get an advanced copy and be part of the review process, which I always take as a true gift. And this is what I happen to say about Ethan's book, Six, Six Minutes of Success. Move over, Tony Robbins. <laughs> Uh, six dimensional success is, see, I love this. I love the fullness, the abundance of every area in your life, the hell yes, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that Ethan's whole approach to life is about there's a win and a balanced life. You, you get to have winning in everywhere. So I'm going to, let's go into the six dimensions of success, a little bit about you and just bring it on. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so yeah, the six dimensions of success. Well, let me back up a little bit because what this is, it's all about um, the new answer to life balance because we often hear work-life balance and you know eight hours this, eight hours that, and you're trying to balance family and all of this. And it's just too, it's too hard. And, it, and it's honestly, it's flawed. And the reason I believe that it's flawed is because if you think about the concept of balance, you think about like a seesaw where one side has to be up and the other side has to be down or vice versa and it, or at best maybe it's mediocre average at the middle and none of those scenarios are great because who wants to be down in any area so instead we have the what i call the six dimensions of success which are your spirituality um that's the s so that's that also stands for like your subconscious restructuring stillness focusing on the self the inner game and then your intellect that's the i part of it um intellectual improvement and implementation always be learning feeding your brain and actually implementing the things that you learn and then the m is for money mastery anything that has to do with your career with your finances with wealth with, with financial wealth has to do with the money category then p is for your physical presence so that's your fitness and nutrition of course but also how you carry yourself how you dress um any anything dealing with your physical self is in the p category l is for your love and relationships so all types of relationships whether it be romantic relationships family um, with your coworkers, with your employees with your boss we all have various types of relationships in our lives that we need to constantly be aware of and, and calibrate. And then finally, E is for entertaining experiences because you can have it all in the other five areas, but if you're not intentional about designing entertaining experiences in this life, then you could be miserable. It can lead to depression. Um, so you have to be very intentional about designing entertaining experiences. So that spells an acronym simple s-i-m-p-l-e because i believe that we make it too difficult on ourselves we make it harder than it has to be it's really simple to have it all across those six areas by focusing on constant contextual calibration of those areas not balance but day to day you have to understand that those levels are going to be in flux from day to day from week to week depending on what's going on in your life but just being aware of that and constantly adjusting those levels. And in the book, I give step-by-step -step actionable tips on how you can improve your levels in each one of those areas. That, and I've applied this in my life and I do it every single day. Um, you can truly, I believe, have it all across all six dimensions of success. So let's get into cool what you've created. So okay. You, you, you were successful before the book and, and within that, and then I love, uh, you're, you're such a creative genius in, in everything you've done. So getting to, cause people are like, well, who are you to tell me these things? 
yeah. when in and then when it gets to come from your experience like zeus's closet brilliant so you you were a success in, in your own right zeus's closet right brilliant tell us a little bit what zeus's closet is six-pack mindset where, yeah. where this is shown this is this is your 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 background of what you created and then you you, you leaned in for the book tell us a yeah. little bit about your background yeah definitely and um i don't want people to be misled and to think that i was already a success because this is about a journey in fact i was very very broken in every single one of those six areas and i've been in a dark place in my life and um i came through and it wasn't by accident it was very intentional but it's because i paid attention to signals for example and, and I, I like to say that i had three near-death experiences if you will not literal near-death experiences where i was in a hospital and flatlined but where i was close enough to death that i saw where i was headed if i continued going in this direction and i and i decided to make a change before it's too late because so often we hear about people who don't make that change and then they end up having a tragic end at a young age um, and we especially hear this with entrepreneurs did you know that entrepreneurs one in three entrepreneurs is living with depression and depression is one of the biggest leading causes of, of suicide so just just dealing with as what we're dealing with as entrepreneurs you're, you're already at high risk so and i saw i've i've had friends who have taken their own lives i've i've had friends who have had health issues because of the stress that they're dealing with and anxiety issues um, and we're talking about at a young age 40s and 50s so the reason i decided to write the book is to help people by sharing my journey from where i was to where i am now and a, a bit about my journey briefly um I, I always wanted to be an artist when i was a kid i wanted to be a professional artist like drawing and painting and my parents told me, you know, artists don't make any money until after they're dead. <laughs> so, um, which, which I can see why they say that in the art world. I mean, you know, Van Gogh has paintings that have went for like $80 million, but long after his death. And, um, well, it just so happened that I really liked money and wanted to make a lot of money. So those two things didn't quite go hand in hand. But I was also a stubborn kid and I decided to pursue a career in art anyway. Well, it turns out that my parents were right, and <laughs> <laughs> I was very broke. I was a starving artist for, literally, a starving artist for uh, a good portion of my young adult life. I remember sometimes all I could afford to eat for dinner was microwave popcorn, um, and I was trying to make it work. Unfortunately, I made bad decisions, and I, I was always a hustler, but sometimes I did it on the wrong side of the law, and I found, found myself getting arrested, getting in trouble with the law, and I even got suspended from college. Um, I remember, like it was yesterday, when the college, the university president called me into his office and suspended me because of my behavior, and I was thankful that he didn't expel me. So I was able to graduate, and um, but I, I couldn't get a good job. I, I didn't have a good job. I, um, I had a bit of a criminal record. I had a degree in art. <laughs> Um, so here I am working odd jobs, one of them being taking out the trash at this strip club in a dangerous part of Atlanta. And I just knew that there was, there had to be more. I, I just knew I was headed down. This, this isn't how I saw my life ending up. And I how even started doing, with that point. Just, so this was about, this was after college. So it was about 22, 21, okay. 22, 23. Okay. And, um, I knew that I needed to make a change. Even the, 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 uh, the DJs and the promoters at the club, once they saw that I had some art skills and graphic design skills, they're like, hey, we want you to design party promotions for our, for our strip club parties. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's great. Well, I get to use my talents, but I didn't want to use it for that. I felt like, God, the universe has had more in store for me. And I, and I, I felt this itch, like, you need to make a change. You need to make a change. But I, was, I just felt like I was stuck. But the thing I want people to understand is that you're never stuck. It's all in your head. You can change anything about your life. I didn't understand that at that time. But what happened is one night while I was on my way to the strip club, I got carjacked at gunpoint. I got robbed and I literally saw my life flash before my eyes and I took off running 
I thought this guy was going to kill me. I heard my, my car screech and my tire screech and the car drive off in the background after, after I hopped over a fence to uh, save my life. And I just said, never again. I, I have to make a change. And I just, I never went back to working in that industry again. And I tell you, I don't think it's coincidence, but within 30 days after that, my life changed. I landed a full-time job as a graphic designer. I started picking up uh, really big like name clients like Tyler Perry was one of my clients, um, McDonald's radio stations. I started picking up big legitimate clients. At the same time, a side business that I had started in college as a school project with my girlfriend, it was called Stuff for Greeks, it um, started taking off. So we, we designed fraternity and sorority apparel for colleges and we started getting orders from across the country from complete strangers and we're like, whoa, this is interesting. And that business grew and grew. We ended up opening a retail store and that's how Zeus's Closet was born. We were able to buy a building in West Midtown Atlanta and um, we started getting recognized for our rapid business growth and getting written up in the newspaper and winning awards. And one of those awards was called the Bulldog 100. And this was the, um, the fastest growing companies owned by UGA alumni. That was the college I went to, the same college that I had gotten suspended from. Well, we won this award four different times. And the first time we won this award, when I stepped on stage, guess who presented me with the award? It was that same president that had kicked me out of college a decade early. And um, I just saw that as a moment, a defining moment, where I knew that I was finally in alignment with the purpose that the universe had in store for me. And that's one, a key thing that I talk about in my book is find, getting in alignment because we can feel when we're not in alignment, when things aren't going right, we get these nudges from the universe. So seek to get in alignment. And that's where the subconscious restructuring comes into play. Now for different people, it's going to be different things. A lot of times the word spirituality scares people off, but it's really prayer, meditation. All of this is really, aligning your subconscious and to, to ascend to a, a deeper level of consciousness. And what that does is scientifically, it helps you make better decisions that are in tune with what you are meant to do because we're all connected in this space. And when you do that, when you make the right decisions, then because every, every little decision we make is that's how we, wherever you are today, you're nothing but an accumulation of choices that you've made in the past. Right. So you can change going forward by making the right decisions to put you where you are, where you want to be. And I believe that there are just infinite versions of myself out there based on like different deci decisions that I've made here and there. And it could be minor decisions, whether you go right or left, major decisions. Do I get married? Do I not get married? Do I have kids, not have kids? Do I start the business, keep working? All of those impact who you become and who you are. And I believe, and there's a lot of talk about like the multiverse out there now with all the, the Marvel stuff, but I do believe that there are versions of me out there in other dimensions. And in one of those dimensions is the best version of Ethan. And I always think to myself, like, what, what would he do? What, would, what decision would he make? You know, what, whatever you call the, the best version of yourself, whether a, he's a billionaire with a six pack and happily married, whatever that means for you. But I always think like, what would that version of Ethan do? And I use that as my decision making framework, because I once heard this saying that the definition of hell would be to die and meet the person that you could have become. And that just. It, it, it keeps me up at night. It's, it's, it's my driving force. I want to be, I want to be that person that I could have become. And I don't want to man, get to the end of the road and say, oh man, if only I would have done this, if only I would have done that. You know, so that, that's my decision-making framework. That's what drives the subconscious restructuring. So that's the story of Zeus's closet. And I have um, other stories where even with my fitness, I had a health scare and I lost a lot of weight. You, uh, you want to say something? No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> rolling right into it. Another facet of, of really, truly where you continue to thrive and, and bring success in, in your life and for yeah. others. And I wanted to share this journey with people because I want them to see. I, nothing saddens me more than when I meet someone who just feels like they are stuck in their circumstances because life 
is more malleable and more pliable than most people realize. You have the power to shape your destiny. You are a creator. We are all creators. We all come from that same spark of creation and we're all connected. I think of it like a candle. Like if I have a candle and a flame and I take another candle and I, and I touch it, then I've, I've created, I've cloned that flame, right? And I could keep doing that with candles. I can create as many, I can create an infinite number of candle flames off of that master flame, right? And they have the same properties as that master flame. It's infinite. It's never going to run out. And I think of spirituality and the universe in that way. And that, that's, that's my version of, of God, if you will, that we are all interconnected and that we all have that same creator energy. And that's what I believe when the Bible says you are created in the image of God. That's what I believe that it means. And I believe that all religions have some version of that. With that piece, it was it was Dr. Cass Thorey, a, a good friend of mine, another another author. The way that she has described it is that we are all droplets of the ocean. Yeah. But the ocean is within all of us. So that that stuck with me that 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 the godliness, the spiritualness, and, and the connectivity at that we are all connected. So yeah. same same thought waves and um yes so Definitely. with with that and there's another with that so it's also jennifer Hall. i keep hearing this that her her press prep uh her analogy is that when when you're truly in that that spiritual that meditation and you and you were in our flow that our our greatest and closest to the divine and, and and everyone looks at it differently but it's still the divine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that when we're creating then we truly are in our divinity that's right which i, I find fascinating that is what you're saying that our gift because we're right. all here for a purpose and only only we can bring that forward and i love that you're standing you're standing for for so many people to come forward to come recognize their gift to to get out of pain to get out of being stuck so yeah. you, you just again you, you you were already on your way and that your generosity bringing this forth with passion so if anyone ever gets to see you on stage you're incredible everything you do you're incredible Thank but you. i just I just wanted to lean in that and really, you know, acknowledge your generosity. Thank you. Thank you. I, and I, I just want other people to have the, the same thing I've had and be able to turn things around in my life. And when it came to my physical, um, I'll tell you a story. So I was going through, this is, this is after the business had grown. We got in a war as well. It never is just an easy road in business. So I don't want to be misleading and think that and have people think that, oh, it was just uh, we lived happily ever after because it doesn't it doesn't work like that. We ended up in this legal battle that was very, very taxing. It was very unfair, um, abusive, and I felt like my back was against the wall. And there was even a time where I entertained the idea of bankruptcy. And this was so I felt like very, very low as an as an entrepreneur. I'm like, man, what is going on? And I didn't see a way out. So I decided um, in thinking about those six dimensions that since I couldn't control the money situation at that point in time, I wasn't going to let that bring down all of the other areas, my spirituality, intellect, my physical, my love relationships, my entertainment. So I decided to train for my first marathon <laughs> in the middle of this. And my, my, my peers, I mean, my mastermind group and stuff, they thought it was crazy. They were like, you don't have time to train for a marathon. That, it takes like three hours of running a day to, to train to run uh, 26 miles. But I knew that I needed a win. I needed, I wasn't going to let it pull me down in all the areas. So I needed to win in that physical and I was able to finish that. So, and then I got clarity during training from that, uh, for that marathon. I got clarity from things that I was studying and listening to. And I got the insight going back to the spiritual to fire my attorney, hire a new attorney. We ended up countersuing the other party and in the end we prevailed and were able to settle it out of court. And not only that, but my business actually grew because of the changes that we made going through it. 
So that's why I believe that sometimes it's not a linear um, decision that you have to make. Sometimes you need to focus on the other buckets and don't let one pull you pull you all the way down because that's what happens and that's why sometimes people meet a tragic end because what if I let the money situation pull me down and then it pulled down my physical too and then it, it damaged my relationship and I'm shouting at my wife and, and hitting my kids and then, <laughs> and then it pulls down the spirituality and then at the end you, you just feel like there's no other option and that unfortunately that's what happens with a lot of people so I want people to be aware of all of those levels it's like a dashboard and you need to be aware of um, all of those levels and be in constant calibration of them and then so after I, uh -huh. go ahead I, I, yeah. Finish. Okay. I was gonna, so what you what your guiding principles right because this is what we're talking about and and so even the first we'll get the book right mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. because it's a very implementable book that's what it's meant to be it, it's, it's it's an easy read really a great read but it's it's it, there are steps and it, it, you're meant to implement so today if we were to the start right because it's always about starting Mm -hmm. the hell yes or no which i it just i thought that was one of the, the that was that that that's that's a right out the gate if we lean right. into that our audience today is pe people are stuck people are hurting people are are alone in this even though they don't they don't get to be right when we bring them forward so hell yes or no what <laughs> what is that yeah you know we only have so many hours in the day. Uh, we all we're all given 24 hours and we so often spend time on things that really don't mean that much to us. If you, if you really think about what's important to you as a person, not what you think um, society wants you to do or your parents want you to do or or your cultural traditions. Um, if you really sit down and think about what is important to me and say and when you're faced with a decision think does this really excite me is it a hell yeah and if it's not then just make it a no stop doing the lukewarm stuff because you're wasting time on that instead it's either a hell yeah or it's a no and then you take that time that you were saving that, that you were doing the lukewarm stuff and move it to more of the hell yeah side and that's how you achieve more in life and then the other principle is mm -hmm. that so within that then that you also have a paradigm shift about you you initially were talking about the balanced life mm -hmm. but in that balancing means something's something's going to have to give right. for or be mediocre right and and right. that doesn't work so you it flipped all of that and the hell yes has to do with choosing what excites you right and then lean again into the scale because the thing is so it's very visual. Right, right. Yeah. So the um, the whole, yeah, you, you can't, instead of thinking about like a scale, think about it like this. Next time you're on an airplane, look at the wings. The wings of an airplane are not rigid. They are always, they're constantly in motion. They, all those flaps, there are literally hundreds of little flaps on an airplane wing. You can't even see most of them. But they're constantly moving and calibrating to get you to your destination safely with a minimal amount of turbulence, but they're always in motion. So instead of thinking about that seesaw where, oh, well, one thing has to be down, I have to give up something. I have to give up um, time with my family if I want my business to succeed. Or I can't focus on health right now. It's a waste of time trying to get a six pack. I need to, to do this over here. You don't have to give up one for the other. You can have it all just if you just think about them like those airplane wings and just make tiny calibrations along the way but the first step is to be aware so what i would tell people to do is take each of the, those six dimensions of success write them out spirituality intellect money physical presence love and relationships and entertainment and just grade yourself give yourself an honest assessment of where you are one to ten in each one of those areas just right now, at this point in time, this is not a, a label that you're slapping on yourself for your entire life. You're not saying this is how I am. You're saying right now, these are where my levels are in each of these six areas. And be honest, be non-judgmental, because you can't know where you're going. You can't change anything until you know where you are. And um, if you think about a GPS system, you have to put in your starting location and then you have to put in your destination. You can't get anywhere if you don't know your starting location first. 
So start with that, do that assessment. And then when you pick up the book and I have the copy of the book right here, it's called Wealth Beyond Money. I, uh, I changed the title. I, I, I know Maureen got a very early copy of it and uh, we actually changed the title along the way to Wealth Beyond Money because- Okay, so clearly, let's <laughs> reshift that there, Wealth Beyond Money. Get Wealth the book, forget what I said. <laughs> but it is the so, subtitle mentions the six dimensions of success. So the subtitle is unlocking the six dimensions of success for richness in every area of your life. So that's the book Wealth Beyond Money. Um, it became an international bestseller on Amazon. Uh, number one uh, international bestseller. So we're super happy about that. And I am blown away by the number of people who have said to me already, I have read your book twice or more than twice, or I pick it up and I refer to it every day. And I, that, that just, that just blows my mind. It just blows me away because that's what I wanted for people and, and for them to consult this book, uh, because it is comprised not just of my own personal learnings through, through my, my, my personal journey, but also research that I've done for the past eight years on super successful people um, who have it all because it's, it's not just me there there are lots of people who manage to have it all in all of those six areas but often we don't hear about them as much and we only hear about the ones that had the tragic endings um, there was this gentleman by the name of paul castle he was a um uh, a british real estate tycoon multi-millionaire he was friends with prince charles they used to play polo together he drove the Bentleys and the Ferraris. He flew in the private jets. And one day at the age of 54, he decided to step out in front of a subway train and take his own life. And when I heard that story, I was just like, why? wow, why? What would make somebody do that when they had it all? And what later they interviewed his son and found out that on that day, uh, Paul Castle had just gotten news that his bankruptcy was official and instead of pushing through it, he decided to to just end it. And the, there had been several bad deals. He had, you know, when you peel back the layers, you see that his health wasn't quite in shape. He had been making several visits to the doctor. He was coming up on his fourth marriage. And so obviously he just felt like the imbalances had gotten too far out of whack and he saw no other option. So I want to catch people before it gets to that point because there's always another option and you can always change anything about your life. Um, I believe it was Winston Churchill who said that failure isn't permanent and su uh, success is never permanent and failure isn't fatal. So when things are going great in your life, enjoy it, relish in the moment. It won't always be that way. When things are going bad, remember that you're not going to die from it unless you let yourself, but you can always change anything, but just be aware that everything's in constant flux. And another one of the guiding principles is that we use the terms good and bad, but really nothing in life is good and, or bad. Everything in life is both good and bad. Everything that happens is both good and bad. It's called the law of polarity. Um, so what you have to tune your brain to do is to only see the good part of it and just keep looking for that with different things in your life. So we have this thing in our brain called the RAS, the reticular activating system. It's, it's, a, it's a survival mechanism that's built into our brain that helps us recognize patterns. And it's why if you, like when you get a new car, you start to see that same model car everywhere or that same color car everywhere. And you're like, wow, this is just everywhere. The other day I was out running and I had put on a red shirt and I'm, and I'm running and then I run past these people are having a blood drive in the park and their signs are like, they call it red day. For, to, that was the marketing for their blood drive. And I'm like, okay, red shirt, red day. And then I see a red bird fly across my path. And I'm like, what? And then I see red, a red door. And this is all within like 30 seconds. And I'm like, okay, this is almost like somebody's messing with me here. But no, it was just my reticular activating system was just tuned in to the color red at that point in time. But that's the beauty of it. You can tune in. The, everything's all around us. It's just what you're tuned into. And some people, we've all met people who are tuned into 
the negative. They only see the bad. Oh, that'll never happen. I can't do that because of this. I can't do this because of that. And they don't see the positive where it's right there in front of them. Have you ever met someone like that? And, and then it just seems like bad luck just can, continues to happen to them, those type of people because, but it's because they're inviting it. They're tuned into that frequency. I used to be the same way. Bad stuff used, just used to happen to me all the time. But once I learned that I can, I can change the dial on the radio and I can choose what I want to tune into, I see nothing but goodness. Even, it doesn't mean my life is perfect. Bad, bad stuff happens to me, but I only choose to see the good side in it. Within that, that, that leads right into, so we, it, we are energy and frequencies, right? And I love the piece, and I very much implemented this, is that you start your day standing in a place of, of, of gratitude, right? Yeah. One of the highest frequencies we can, we can achieve. And within that, you're already putting it out to the universe at that higher frequency that this is where I get to be and what I'm grateful for. And, and that, that shifts it all from what's happening. And again, the, the, the gratitude, meditation, our creativity, all of that's in here. And just if you were to leave someone today sitting, stuck, feeling there's no, what, what would be, be get the book. Okay. First of all, let me, okay. Wealth beyond money. Okay. That's the title of the book. That's the title. Yeah. Um, Yes. And again, it's, it's a working document and that's, that's the best part of it. And, but leaving just one, one thing they get to do, yes. what would that be? Yes. Here's what I want you to do. And I'm so glad you brought up gratitude because that is step one. Um, if you think about uh, a building, a skyscraper, what is the first thing that they do when they're building a new skyscraper? They go down, dig in, dig a big hole in the ground and pour the foundation. So what I'm going to give you is the tools for the foundation of your day. So every day, if you think of every day in your life, like a skyscraper, what is the foundation of that skyscraper? What's the foundation of that day? Most of us don't have one. We get up and we immediately start go checking emails, notifications. We're getting pushed around by things that are going on in our life as soon as we get up. Well, if, a, if a skyscraper is built without a foundation, then wind will easily blow it over. Your day works the exact same way. So what you do to build your foundation for every single day is when you wake up, first write down three things that you are thankful for and get very, very granular. Because I, I want you to try to write down three different things every morning. And it could be, the way that my son laughed at dinner last night or the way that the wind is blowing through the trees and the sun is shining through the branches this morning or you know the way that um you know my wife hugged me it, but get very very granular with it and and just you realize that your blessings are infinite so first write down three things you're thankful for that's gratitude after that write down written affirmations um, there's a uh, the, the popular cartoonist Scott Dilbert. I mean uh, Scott Dilbert, Scott Adams. He wrote the uh, he came up with the cartoon Dil Dilbert. Well, he he did it. He started out by writing the affirmation "I will be a famous cartoonist." Or I, no, actually, you put it. You write it in present tense. I am a famous cartoonist. I am a famous cartoonist. He wrote that same sentence 15 times every single day until he manifested it into reality. When we write it out with our hand, it, it, it rewires our brain and then our brain will start to make decisions for us that lead us to that path. So that's the next step. So first you had gratitude. Now you have your affirmations. And what you're doing is you're writing down something in present tense. You're giving it's still like gratitude because you're, you're just giving thanks for something that is going to come in the future because time is really just a construct construct. And then the next thing is your meditation. So there, there are eight different types of meditation. I go into all of them in the book. Um, I like to practice transcendental meditation where I sit still and repeat a mantra in my head and just try to uh, descend into a lower level of um, a deeper state of consciousness. And what that does is like declutter your brain. If you think about your attic and all the junk you have up there and you know stuff is disorganized, a lot of times we feel cloudy in our brain like that. 
Well, that's because we never take time to actually sort things out and clean out the cobwebs. That's what meditation does for you. And then E is for exercise. Our bodies were made to move. We have to get out there every single day and exercise. Not only is it good for our body because we, we were built to be running around and, and walking around and moving around. We weren't made to sit still as much as we sit. Most people are sitting in the car during their commute, then they sit in their desk at work, and then they sit in their car again, and then they get home and sit down and watch Netflix, and our bodies weren't made for that. That is detrimental to our health. So move around, exercise, and not only uh, is it beneficial for your body, but it's also beneficial for your brain. It releases the pleasure chemicals, the dopamine, the oxytocin, the, uh, the serotonin, the endorphins, and so those three things, I, I, wanted, I mean, those four things I want, are what I want to give people today. And it spells another acronym, GAME. Gratitude, affirmation, meditation, exercise. Do that every day for 30 days, every single morning. Put a calendar up on your bathroom mirror. Um, in fact, we're coming out with the Wealth Beyond Money Companion Journal next month. And this is all in there, so you can do it. But until then, you can do this with your own journal, your own piece of paper. But make every single day, make sure you do G-A-M-E, gratitude, affirmation, meditation, exercise and report back and i want to hear how 30 days can change your life i promise if you do those things for 30 days straight you will notice a difference and and i have to thank you because that is what i implemented Good. And, and, awesome. and within that so um okay how how can people get in touch with you how mm -hmm. what, how can they work with you how can they see see you yeah, go. the best way is just to go to my website. It's just my name, EthanKing.com. First, last name, EthanKing.com. Uh, the book, you can get it there. You can also get it on Amazon or you can go to WealthBeyondMoneyBook.com. Um, but pick it up and um, you can email me. I, I do respond to my emails, Ethan at EthanKing.com. And I really want to know what you think. I want to know how it impacted your life uh, because that is the reason why I wrote it. So what's what's next? You're always the, the intention. What what are you putting out into the universe in those affirmations? What's next, Ethan? Yeah. So we are. Um, the book just came out a few weeks ago, and it's doing really well. So the next is the companion journal. That's in the editing phase. So that'll be released ne next month. And then the audio book will be coming out this summer. And um, you know, I'm I'm taking time to travel. Um, some of it just for you know personal enjoyment we have a, a big african safari that we're looking to uh coming up th this uh summer and some of it for speaking gigs so i love speaking to uh to crowds and and motivating the audience and and having them think about things in new ways and giving them things that they can implement tools they can implement in their life to make a difference so doing a lot of speaking still growing the business zeus's closet i'm still involved with that and um just enjoying life man and trying to spread this this word to as many people as i can Okay, so Wealth Beyond Money, the companion journal is coming out. That's absolutely a one-two. Mm -hmm. um, and again, game. Implement game every day and, and how your life gets to shift. That's right. Even King, so fabulous to finally meet you. Same again, too. thank you for what you stand for and, and all the people that you get to bring forward. Thank you, Maureen. This has been great. Great talking to you.